back at the workshop again on a uh, rainy Sunday and I'm working on the MR2 well first look what's not here anymore there is space because the MX-5 is finally gone I kept the wheels which is good because I wanted to but that's gone which means the Corolla can come in soon as you hopefully would have seen in the last video the car had some kind of four and a half thousand rpm rev limiter which during the earlier part of the video i wasn't sure what it was all about and then near the end i kind of thought you know what this is probably launch control because it was mentioned by badger 5 and it's activated via the clutch switch but i didn't think it was on ecu as it was and then i spoke to badger 5 just afterwards on an unrelated thing and he was like just in your video that's launch control and he checked the map and yeah the launch control was activated basically the launch control is normally off the clutch switch on a standard 1.8t but we didn't hook up the clutch switch because i didn't realize it was anything to do with the launch control but as you saw from the mega flames and so on it's pretty fucking awesome so i am now well I've, I've pretty much done it but i am now working out how to make a clutch switch work on this car and it's pretty complicated but i've worked out and it's what i've done i'm quite pleased with and as you might be able to tell it involved some welding <laughs> from welding and some fabrication and some eating some Ferrero Rochers while I was doing so because it's my fucking birthday so I'm allowed to uh, eat chocolate while working on my car so yeah what I did basically was well the first thing I did was the other night I ordered a 180 t clutch switch because they're like £8 on eBay brand new but then when I looked at this car, turns out this has already got a clutch switch. So you think, oh, winner, I'll just use this one. And I have, but this clutch switch is as it is, as in with no modification, is no good to use the launch control. But I've modified things and now it's fucking perfect for it. Whether you want to hear the details of how the fuck 180T launch control is activated, I don't know, but I don't give a shit either, so I'm telling you. Basically, I presumed, which would have made life a lot easier, that it is literally simply grounding one pin on the ECU, because it is one pin on the ECU that affects it, the clutch switch that is. And on a lot of cars I've had in the past, to activate the anti-lag, this, that, the other, it'd be a switch that literally grounds a pin on the ECU. But in uh, 180 land, it ain't that simple. It's the other way around. Um, the pin has to have power for it to be off. And weirdly, the pin hasn't got power. You're not grounding a pin. You're actually providing a 12 volt source to the pin. If you're putting 12 volts to that pin, the clutch switch is off so you get rid of 12 volts and the clutch switch is on and that is um or off whichever way you want to put it and that activates the launch control it also helps with drivability and stuff it stops like the revs hanging a bit when you put the clutch down and shit like that so it's a good thing to have anyway not vital but definitely good but um i really wanted it for the launch control so yeah, the long and short of it is, on a 180T, when you've got the clutch up as standard, the button, the clutch switch, is pushed in. Which means when your clutch is up, there's always power to that pin, so the launch control is deactivated. You put the clutch down, even a little bit, because obviously when you're launching a car, unless you're fucking planning to either spin the wheels or destroy the transmission or both from sidestepping it um you tend to have the clutch semi bit as you're you know to load up the transmission as you're on the launch control 
so yes it as soon as you sort of lift the clutch even the tiniest bit the switch is activated deactivated whatever the fuck you want to say which activates the launch control but it's the other way around on the mr2 as standard the mr2 one the switch is not touched until the pedal's right at the bottom which not only means it would be backwards for the 1AT stuff, as in the launch control would only be deactivated when you add the clutch in. It only will work when your clutch is right down to the floor, which if you're using launch control for anything other than big flames, as in if you're using it to help launch, that's fucking useless. So I did some testing. First up using a nitrous solenoid and a lithium battery and some wire and the clutch switch over there and a separate switch which I'll talk about in a moment I tested that that switch does do exactly what I thought it did and it does so proof of concept is fine I didn't want to like wire it in as I presumed it worked and then it turns out it's fucking wrong but yeah the switch does work in the same way as a Volkswagen one and it's not a faulty switch which means all I needed to do is somehow make that switch be pushed in anytime the clutch is up and out when the clutch is down. I backwards to how it is and I'll show you what I've done. The standard, the standard clutch switch is there. So what happens is you push the clutch down and suddenly right at the end, poop, it pushes it in. That is exactly the opposite of how it needs to be. So I welded a new place for it to be mounted up there and see that sort of hammer a bit. That now pushes the clutch switch in. So with the clutch up, that there is pushing the clutch switch in. So it's how it is on a Volkswagen. So that's basically the launch control deactivated. Once you go to that much clutch position and then onwards, the launch control is active because the switch is out, basically. So yeah, that involved lying on the ground in this very small space on my back with the MIG welder, um, welding these two pieces onto the clutch pedal. And it's pretty simple, but if you add smell of vision right now, You'd, all you'd be able to smell is burning hair where the sparks were setting fire to my hair while uh, I was doing it, which basically wasn't ideal, but it gives me an excuse to cut my hair, which I've been meaning to for fucking weeks now. Um, so yeah, that is basically a piece of steel with a hole drilled in it for the switch to be mounted. Another piece of steel welded to the pedal and that sort of hammer striker bit above which pushes the button in is actually part of the mountain washer thing for wastegate actuators on whole set turbos weirdly it's normally got a hole in the middle but i filled that full of weld so it's now a solid chunk but it's the perfect height basically and yeah it's fucking ideal i'm quite pleased with that because i was trying to work out what the hell i was going to do and what I figured out is actually a really fucking neat and tidy solution that didn't involve, well, anything too complex. And I'll tell you one thing as well, this shows why it's great to have a basic knowledge of welding. As in, you don't have to be super fucking skilled, but just being able to, you know, join a few things together with a welder makes life so much easier. Because you imagine if I even had this idea but couldn't weld, what would I do? You know, I know I'm lucky I've got Thomas here, but he's not even here for about a week. So even if he could do it, I'd be waiting a week and then who knows how busy he is. But your average person, they wouldn't even be able to get a welder to come in and do such a fucking ridiculous thing. The best they would probably manage was to remove the entire clutch assembly take it to somebody, somebody who's like 
understands a bit of fabrication because your average fucking Joe wouldn't even know what you're on about and get them to do it. Whereas if you can even got the most rudimentary welding skills, and mine is pretty fucking rudimentary, you can do this yourself in, I mean, that actual welding took me probably a grand total of two minutes rather than this giant ball ache of shit that if you couldn't weld you'd have to go through to do such a simple task so yeah that's exactly why i got that tig welder as well i'm still shit but i don't want to be some fucking fabrication guru bloody weld porn instagram bellend i literally want it to make my life easier and it does because it's like oh i need to weld an aluminium bracket oh i need to weld two bits of fucking pipe together whatever I don't have to ask people or take it anywhere or do anything and it stopped my progress on the car. I just join that shit together and carry on. And yeah, saves a lot of time. The other part of this thing, which I mentioned was the switch. Normally these launch control setups don't have a switch because the clutch switch is the switch. So you think, what the fuck have I got a switch as well? Well, basically, I don't know, you know, don't get me wrong, this is purely testing, it might be a complete waste of fucking time, but the switch will allow it to be active, if I want it to, by turning the switch on, even if the clutch isn't pressed down, which you think, well, what's the fucking point of that? But maybe, I don't fucking know, so, you know, bear with me. But it might work bloody well, albeit not set by speed, but set purely by RPM, as rolling anti-lag as well, as in what you've probably seen on some American um, street racing videos and shit like that. Basically, rolling anti-lag is like, it's bollocks to call it anti-lag. It's like rolling launch control, but... You know, it's not true anti-lag. Basically, you you got your foot to the floor, but the car is holding steady because of it's bashing off a artificial low rev limiter. I think most rolling anti-lags are run. It will just they press a button and it will hold at whatever RPM they're currently at because they're made as rolling anti-lag. This one, because it's you know just activating the launch control, will only hold it at four and a half thousand RPM. That's absolutely fine as long as four and a half thousand RPM is the suitable speed to use it for. I don't even know if this is going to fucking work. I reckon it will. But for the sake of a tiny bit of extra wiring, it, you know, it's worth a try. So basically, I'm going to have like the rolling anti-lag switch there. And that is the one to open the anti-lag valve, which is reusing the... EGR pipe work, which again, I'm well, I don't think that's going to do much. I don't believe the EGR pipe was big enough to have much of a fresh air anti lag effect, but again, you know, I want to try it because nobody seems to have ever fucking tried it. And this is the same for this rolling anti lag. This is if it works, and I can't think of a reason it won't, but I don't know. That's got the most potential to work out the two if it works i just don't know but you know i'm all about the fucking trying these things i don't just copy every cunt i use my own bloody imagination as you can probably tell so yeah if this works it'd be great if it don't who gives a shit at least i know right i've wired in my uh clutch switch and the uh conversion on the switch and on the clutch pedal so let's see, this should be off. I know the switch is the wrong way around, but I haven't flipped it up yet. So yeah, that revs perfectly, you know, above the launch control. So now I will put the clutch down. And launch control definitely activates with the clutch down. Lift the clutch back up. Nothing. Let's try the switch. So clutch is up, switch is on. Launch control. 
Well, today's been a bit frustrating on the car. I've changed the oil because I just put in some, uh, you know, basic 040 whatever just to run the car and whatever as we was doing testing. I just dropped the oil, put some decent stuff in, some thicker stuff. Fitted the oil temp sensor at last. I've checked it, it works, it's all wired in. It's in the... Um, in the bottom of the sump where the oil level sensor is as standard on these cars in in place of that basically um i haven't tidied up the wire into it yet but i've wired it all in it's correct it works um and then i spent most of the day trying to fix the boost pressure sensor because as i think i mentioned on the last video it's just showing on the am gauge as sens which is basically the gauge saying it can't find the sensor it's not reading the sensor um all the other gauges work fine so it's like oh for fuck's sake i must have buggered up the wiring even though it's super basic i did extend the wiring so maybe i messed it up so i went down screw fix and got a new multimeter because my one's fucked and come back here and continuity tested all the wires because obviously everything else is brand new straight from AEM so it's got to be my wiring so I checked it continuity was perfect on all of them so it's like okay then maybe it's the AEM plugs because maybe in my fucking haste to wire it up I yanked on a plug a bit hard or something and pulled one of the pins out slightly or something I continuity checked the plugs and nope they're all fine so it's like, well, the only thing left is the sensor and it's brand new and unused. So straight from AM with the kit. So surely that works. But I continuity tested that and there was no continuity between ground and power. So basically the sensor's fucked. So yeah, annoying because at best I got to wait for a new one. At worst, I can't just get a new one for free and I'll have to spend fucking 100 quid or something on a new sensor, which is ridiculous when the whole kit only costs about 150 quid. But the main thing is, like, I want it now. I want this car fucking working. So a brand new bastard sensor straight out the box that doesn't work is a bit of a piss take. No doubt these sensors are just made in fucking China or some shit. But yeah, you'd think they'd at least try them before they fucking sent them out. I mean, literally, if you had a machine, you can plug in a, you know, you could plug in a sensor instantly and know if it at least got power. You don't have to, you know, doesn't even have to worry about the calibration. You don't have to check that. That probably is right. Just check the fucking thing works in the first place. But no, there's no power to that one at all. So, yeah. Waiting for a new sensor. Apart from that, all seems good. Um, no oil leaks from when I fitted that oil temp sensor. I'm running out of things to do. It's near enough complete. It's mostly about tidying the wiring. The only thing that doesn't work is that fucking boost gauge. And I'm reluctant to tidy away the wiring until it does work. So it kind of leaves me at a bit of a, uh, a stalled moment for a little while till the sensor turns up. I think it's, well, it's meant to turn up by Wednesday, so only a couple of days away, but still, it's a bit annoying to say the fucking least.